Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Courtship. Here you'll find everything to learn and master competitive programming. So you know the drill with YouTube. If you have not subscribed yet, then make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of the future videos. Great. In this video, we'll talk about three different ways to count the number of set bits in a number in the binary version of a number. And I'll basically literally be pouring out all my knowledge on this topic because we are discussing three different ways to do the exact same thing. So let's start off with the first approach, the rudimentary way, and which is to simply check for every bit if it's set or not. So let's say the number is 10101100 and this number is 84, right? And what we'll do is we'll simply check for the last bit so here the last bit is 0 so we can simply remove it and let's say we have a count variable that is 0 right so we don't increment anything then again we remove the last bit and again it was 0 so we don't do anything then this was 1 so now the number of set bits we can increase that again we remove the last bit we remove the last bit and increment our counter because that was 1 then we remove it again and this was 1 as well. So now our counter becomes 3. And finally what we will be left with is a lot of zeros. right? And so basically what we can do is when our number becomes 0 we can stop there because definitely when it's 0 there is no set bit left in it. So let's code it out as well. This is a really basic approach. So let's create a function for this. So end count set bits in n and let's initialize the variable count equal to 0 while n is greater than 0 we'll check if the last bit of n is set and this can be done through this right and then I increment count if it's set and we'll chip off the last bit of n right and then we can simply return count so let me just walk you through this. So what's happening is let this was the number, right? If this is the number, right? So what it's doing is it's to check if the last bit of a number is set or not. What we can simply do is we can bitwise and it with one, right? And one we know is simply a lot of zeros followed by one. So what will basically happen is that all these bits right these all these will inevitably become zero right because they are being taken the bitwise and with zero and even if that's one or zero the result will always be zero and only the last bit here only this bit if this is zero in this case so zero and one is zero so we get zero but if had this been one so one and one we know is one so the last so this result would have been one right so simply n bitwise and with 1 is going to give us 0 if the last bit is also 0 right or 1 if the last bit is 1 so if this is 1 this means the last bit is set and to chip off the last bit well as we discussed in the previous video what we do is we can right shift the number by 1 and right shifting the number by 1 means removing the last one bit so that's how this algorithm is working Right, so it initializes count 0, then it checks while n is greater than 0. If the last bit is, okay, so this should be 1. So if the last bit is, is set, then I increment the count. And then what we do is we remove the last bit. Right, and then we can return count. So let's run it as well. Right, so it will just take an input and return the number of set bits. So for 84, there were three set bits. Let's see what we out, what we get. Right, so we're getting three, and this is the pretty basic approach. And now coming to the main purpose why this video is being created is the efficient algorithm. Although there's one thing I would like to mention that this algorithm itself is really, really efficient because the number of bits, the maximum, or instead always the number of bits in the binary form of any number. The length of its binary form is approximately log n only 
so even for a 1 million it's just going to take around 20 operations so this is one of those few algorithms that when written in a naive way when simply brute forced are very efficient themselves but there's one very clever very smart approach to this as well developed by the and brian kerningen and it's the name of the algorithm is the brian kerningen's algorithm to count the number of set bits and that's how it, and this is how it goes so what it simply does is it relies on a very smart mathematical trick that what is the value of n bitwise and with n minus 1 right so let's have a look at what happens to the binary form of a number when 1 is subtracted from it so again taking the above number 84 right so when i subtract 1 from this so before understanding the binary systems subtraction Let's simply take the example of 73 minus 5. So how do you do it? So clearly if this was if this would have been 78, so from 8 you can easily subtract 5. But here you cannot do that, right? So what you do is because decimal system is base 10 system, so you can borrow a 10 from its left neighbor. So th this becomes 30. And because anyways, this is nothing but 7 into 10 plus 3, right? So this holds the left neighbor holds 10 times more significance than the right neighbor so this has to be only subtracted by 1 so this becomes 6 right so you borrow a 10 from whatever is on your left that decreases by 1 and you increase by 10 causing no change to the numbers value but now it's possible to, uh, to subtract 5 from 13 so we get 8 and then 6 right so similar goes for binary system as well the only thing is that when we borrow something we add 2 to its value right so if 0 so let's say we subtract 1 from it right so 0 will take 2 from its left neighbor so this becomes 2 now and this becomes minus 1 but minus 1 needs to be positive so it will again take 2 so this becomes 1 right and this becomes 0 right and here we can stop because 1 can uh, borrow its uh, can kind of lend lend its value to its right neighbor so now what we can do is we can simply say 2 minus 1 is 1 and this is 1 as well but this first so basically the rightmost one that will basically give its value to all its right neighbors so this now becomes 0 right and all these bits are unaffected so they stay as as, as they are right so this is the new result and one thing pretty evidently noticeable as well is that this part of the number is always the same and this part of the number gets toggled so a zero so for the for, for the rightmost one all the bits from it till the end get toggled because a zero will become a one right and that one has to lend its value so that becomes a zero 1 becomes 0, 0 becomes 1, this 0 becomes 1 as well. So in other words, we can say that n bitwise and with n minus 1 is simply going to, okay, so this is n minus 1, right? And now this bitwise and with n, so n was 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, right? So what is happening now is, is that all these bits again will stay the same, right? This part will again stay the same. Right. And so what will happen is that 1 and 1, right, 1 and 1 is always 1, 0 and 0 is always 0, 1 and 1 is 1, 0 and 0 is 0. So this part basically stays the same and this part will always give a lot of zeros. And because this part is nothing but the toggled version of this part only, so their bitwise and will always be 0. So did you notice that what actually happened is that initially the number was 1 0 1 0 1 0 0 and now what what simply happened is that this one got unset right so this one got converted to a zero all these bits on the left stayed unaffected and all the bits on the right stayed unaffected so basically the rightmost one gets unset so that's exactly what happens when you bitwise bitwise and these two values so now we can say that a single one got unset and while n is 0, while n is not 0, while n is greater than 0, 
we can keep setting n to bitwise and of n and n minus 1 and this way the number of times this loop is running that is simply the number of ones there are right so so basically as you can see that one of the bit got unset and next time this bit will get unset and in the next iteration this bit will get unset so total of three bits uh, got unset and after this n is zero and here we can stop so this is the smart trick behind the brian kerning algorithm i would recommend to kind of play with some binary numbers see how they get subtracted to get a to gain a better intuition and a better feel for this right so let's code it out as well okay so we have a function brian kerning that will take an integer and again it's going to create a variable count and then while n is greater than 0 we'll keep on setting n to the bitwise and of n and n minus 1 right so we can remove this right and then what we'll do is we'll increment count so in one iteration one bit will get unset and the number of times the iteration runs is simply the number of set bit then we can return the count fine so the beauty of this algorithm also lies in how the time complexity of this algorithm is equal to what is actually desired from the algorithm that is o of number of set bits and this basically means that in the worst case it has the same complexity as the above function right that is log in if all the bits are set but usually that's not the case and in fact this is just an algorithm that you should need to know it anyways doesn't make your program much faster because let's say if this is taking around 20 operations then this will take around 10 operations and that doesn't really even count for a microsecond so this is just an algorithm you should know to develop that algorithmic thinking to be able to think of clever algorithms yourself and to gain a better feel of the binary system right and this gets even more justified when I break your heart by saying that to count the number of set bits, all you have to do is use an inbuilt function of your language. So instead of this, so let me first run this algorithm, right? So this is giving us three as well. But what if I say that instead of this, you can simply output underscore underscore built in underscore pop count of n so built in pop count of n is simply going to give you the number of set bits in n and this is a built in as suggested by the name a built in c++ function in python though don't get scared if you are from python right all you have to do is you have to write something like the binary of n right and dot count of 1 right dot count 1 instead Right, so this will first convert the number to binary and then it will simply count the number of ones. Right, doesn't it feel heartbreaking to have spent a lot of time learning these two algorithms and then realizing that there's a built-in algorithm in C++ and almost in every popular language? Well, kind of, but they are really important as well. You have built-in sorting algorithms in your language. In C++, you even have one to binary search. Then but you still learn five or six by sorting algorithms, right? Why do you do that? Just to develop some algorithmic thinking. So hopefully this cleared a lot of concepts. You learned a really important algorithm. And if you learned something new, make sure to like the video. This is Bharat Singla from Codeshift signing off for now. And I'll see you next time.